Okay, good afternoon class. So today we're looking at quadratic equations. We're looking at the exercise 2.17. So in our previous lesson we got, got up at the number. So now I must do number 6. So here we have told that the perimeter <coughs> the perimeter of a rectangle is 17 meters. So if you're looking at the rectangle, then remember the perimeter is going to be 2 length plus 2 breadth, not so. So uh, the perimeter of a rectangle is 17. And the area is 15. Area is going to be length times length. Not so. So if the perimeter is 15, uh, 17, so it's 17 equals 2L plus 2B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make B the subject of the formula. So 2B is equal to 17 minus 2L. So B is simply uh, 17 minus 2L over 2. Or 17 over 2 minus L. The question says find the dimensions of the rectangle, in other words, must calculate the length of the breadth. Not so much. So you could have gone and introduced your x as a b or so on, but this is fairly simple. So um, your area is 15. So 15 is equal to l times b. So if this is equation 1 and equation 2, I can just substitute this now into equation 2. Not so. So we're now going to read 15 is equal to L times 17 minus 2 L over 2. So um, I'm going to cross multiply by 2. So that's going to give you multiply this L in. It's going to be 17 L minus 2 L squared. For those of you who are a bit confused, remember that is over 1. Which now can be written as... Um, uh, 17 minus 2L times L over 2. That's basically what that means in a cross multiply. Take everything to one side since it's quadratic, so 0 is equal to negative 2L squared plus 17L minus 2. So what do I have here? I have a quadratic equation, not so. So one of two things, I can use that quadratic formula where I can find the factors, not so. So 17, 2 is 15. Looks like there's no roots to that sum. No, um, what's the name of roots? So would I, would I have to use the, no, it will. So if I use the quadratic formula, it's simply x is equal to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, so that's basically going to give us uh, 17 in the negative plus the square root. You're not going to put plus minus, it's just one of the two at that point. 17 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 2 times c. It's all over 2a. It's 5 over 2, so 2.5. And of course, the other one is going to be negative. Six. Okay. But what did I actually calculate? I calculated the length. Not so. So instead of x, I'm supposed to have put. Oh. 
Okay. So have I answered the question? The question was for the dimensions, not so. So if your 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 length is six, remember this is L. Your length is six, then your breadth is going to be seventeen minus two times six over two. Not so. Two times six is twelve. Seventeen minus twelve is. 17 minus 12, it's 5. So it's 5 over 2, which is 2.5. You see that that solution is coming up there again? Or if your length is 2.5, then I think you're going to get the a breadth of, of course, 6. But normally, length is the longer side, not so. 2 times 6, um, there's not 6, but uh, 2.5. Uh, 2 times 2.5, that is 5. 12, uh, 17 minus 5 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, but as I said, the length is normally the longer side. Okay, so if we had written both, no problem, but that's the solution we're looking for. Any confusion there, people? Any confusion? No? Let's look at the next one, number seven. <coughs> number seven, we are told that a rectangle has an area of 60, centi uh, 60 meters square. The length and the width of each increase by two. So we've got the rectangle, which area is 60 meters square. So we say let x be the breadth. be the breadth with the width sorry the width let x be the width so if x is the width then we know that the area is going to be length times width not so what's the area 60 so that's going to be um, 60 times out x so your length is going to be 60 over x so they have written my length in terms of x so the width is x and the length is 60 over x. Okay. If the length and the width each increase by 2, so we're going to increase that by 2 and we're going to increase this by 2. So we've got 2 and 2 there. So in other words, this length is going to be x plus 2 and this length is going to be 60 over x plus 2. You see that, people? I'm going to pull it down here. Oops. 60 over x plus 2. If the length of and the width each increase by 2, the area is doubled. So currently the area is, the area 1 is um, 60, so area 2 is double area 1. Can you see that? So that's going to give you 2 times 1, uh, 2 times 20, which is? 2 times 60, so it is 120 meters squared. Find the dimensions. Dimensions is the length and the breadth. Not so. Of the original rectangle, correct to one decimal place. So the one in blue we're looking for. Not so. So, um, remember, the area of the second piece is again going to be length times width. So, remember, that's the big one now. So that's going to give us 60 over x plus 2 must be multiplied by x plus 2. And that is equal to 120. So 120 is equal to, and I multiply the story out, 60 over x times x is 60. 60 over x times 2 is 120 over x. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 2 is, of course, 4. So everything to one side, the equal sign. Well, first I'm going to multiply it out by x because I want to get rid of the fraction. So it's going to give you 120x is equal to 60x plus 120 plus 2x squared plus 4x. As you can see, it's a quadratic, so 0 is equal to 2x squared. 60 minus 120 is negative 60 plus 4 is negative 56. x plus 120. 
Now one of two things I can do here, I either can use a quadratic formula or you can factor this. Not so the number seven. Let's just check the answer if I'm right now. Let's look at this one. So let's check here. I'm going to use the, the, the option on this calculator. So it's 2, negative 56, and uh, 120. Let's check what's the answer at the back. Is it right? So um, x is equal to? 25 comma 66 six, six is 25 comma 7 meters or x is equal to 2 comma 2 3 2 comma 3 3 is a 2 3 2 comma 3 4 so 2 2 comma 3 meters now the original dimensions. So the original dimension of course is going to be this is blue here. Yeah? So it's either your, your, your width which is x equals 25 comma 7 meters and then if your width is 25 comma 7 then your length is going to be 60 over 25 comma 7. I think that is going to be here uh, 2.3. 2, 2. Not so? Yes. It's going to be 60, uh, 60 over 25.7 with an answer of 2.33. And again, people, the, the, the width is normally the shorter length of the two. Yeah? So uh, your length is no, uh, would have been 25,7 while your width is 2,3. Okay, but if you go that, that route, we won't uh, penalize you because that's also. The right answer there. Mm -hmm. The free answer there. Okay? Will you guys understand? Yes. yes. How do we know which one to x equals both? Uh, that we don't see which one is then If they don't specify, then you can use any one you want to use. Then you write the other name in terms of x. Okay. Let's go to number 8. Number 8 is on page. It's all this on 65. The reception the room in the hotel is a square. So we have a square. That means to say all lengths are equal. And alterations are done to make the room larger. One side of the room is increased by 3. So, so we say let x be the length of side of square. So here's an x and there of course will be x as well. Right? So one side of the room is increased by 3, so there's 3, and the other side by 1, so there's 1. The area of the new room is 63 centimeters square. So the second area of course is 63 meters square. Calculate the dimensions of the old room. So you must calculate X. Not so. Good. Eh? Dimensions with length and breadth. In the side, since it's a square, um, you will just need to solve x. But what is this length in terms of x? X plus one. X plus one. And this length here? X plus three. X plus three. So we know that the area is going to be length times breadth. Not so. So the area is 63 is equal to length which is x plus 6 and the breadth is x plus 3. Okay. X plus 6 is 6. 4 plus 1. Now did that pass? Oh, this is this. Sorry. Let's quickly on the correct x plus 1. Sorry about that. Thank you x plus 1, x plus 3. So from here, this is, is just an uh, quadratic equation. So 0 is equal to x squared 
that is going to give you 3x plus x is 4x. That is 3 minus 63 is minus 60. So the x is equal to. Again, I can either use factors for that equation or use the calculator or completing the square. So that's going to give you 1, 4, and negative 60. Give you an x value of 6, and the, and the other one is the x value of negative 10. People can this then be negative? No. So what is the, the question says? Calculate the dimensions. Therefore, x is equal to 6. Or you can say that the side of the square, side of square, is equal to 6 centimeters. In centimeters or meters? Meters. So you're going to be six meters. Do you have any confusion there? No. Very simple, huh? Right, let's go to the next one, number nine. Product of two consecutive even numbers is 288, find the integers. The, the product of two consecutive even integers. So, what do we say? Let x be the integer, the first integer. Then what is the next integer going to be? x plus 1. x plus 1. Okay, she says. Now, choose a value for x. 12. 12. 12 plus 1? Is that, is that even? No. You remember, yeah, the product of two consecutive even numbers. So if the first number is 12, what must the next number be? 14. If the first number is 20, what's the next number? 22. 16 and 18. 16 and 18 is 20. But now, if the first number is x, what's the next number? X plus 2. So the second number? would be x plus 1. Remember if the sum says you must set up an equation and you got 16 and 18, whatever the answers might be, you only get 1 out of 5. Yeah. Because you must set up an equation as we do. That part costs you, you are already two marks. Yeah. So the product people do, to do the product, I must multiply. So it's the first number times the second number. Equals 288. Just to, to, to take you one step back, if the first number is negative 4, what is the next number? Negative 6 or negative 2, no? It's actually negative 6. But okay? Negative 6 or negative 2. Alright, so what we do is we solve for x here, gives us x squared plus 2x minus 288. Again, so for that equation. They get to the calculator, it says 1, 2, negative 2, 88. It will be 16 and negative 18. So x equal to 16 or x equal to negative 18. Sorry? So if the one number is 16, so if x is equal to 16, then what is the next number? 18. So it's going to be, if x equal to 16, then the consecutive numbers is 16 and 18. What's 16 times 18? 288. On the other hand, if x is equal to negative 18, then you've got negative 18 plus 2, which is negative 16. So therefore it will be negative 16 and negative You guys understand? And what's negative 16 times negative 18? 288. Right? You guys understand? The number 10. A train travels 90 kilometers with a full load between two stations in the Karoo. Time, speed, distance, scenario. Speed, distance, time. The speed, distance, time, to, and return. Or you can say from. 
Again, we need that here on top, PST at the bottom. Okay. A train travels 90 kilometers with a full load between two towns in the Karoo. A two stations, sorry, in the Karoo. On the return journey, the, um, the train travels empty and is able to travel 30 kilometers per hour faster and complete the journey in 30 minutes less time. In 30 minutes less time. Calculate the speed of the load, of the loaded train and the time between the two stations when the train is loaded. So when we start, we say left, X B, uh, the uh, initial speed. Okay. So if X is the, the initial speed, what's the distance between the two towns? 90. If the, if the person returns, it's also 90. We must have something that is constant. On the empty train, he's able to travel 30 kilometers per hour faster. So his speed is going to be x plus 30. So remember time, if you want to calculate time, distance over speed. So it's going to be 90 over x. While well, the return is going to be also distance, at the time is going to be distance over speed, which is 90 over x plus. Now the difference between the two low is the speed. Um, Two legs of the journey is a difference of 30 minutes. So when I subtract the two times, I must get 30 minutes. Huh? Not so. Now which one of the two is longer? Which one takes longer? Which one is bigger? The first leg of the journey. Not so. So I'm going to say 90 over x minus the shorter leg. It's going to be half an hour or 30 minutes. I'm going to write this in hours. Why? Because the speed is given in kilometers per hour. You guys understand? So that's equal to 30. Um, 30 over 60, which is 1 over 2. Always simplify this, otherwise you're going to denominate it's going to be fairly large. Okay. So what's my LCM here, people? 32 plus 32. 2 x into x plus 30. So what must this be multiplied by? So it's going to be 90 times 2 into x plus 30. As you can see, the x is already accounted for. Minus 90 times. What must this be multiplied by? 2 x. And there you can see that it's accounted for already. Equals. What must this be multiplied by? x into x plus 30. You want to get the 1 in front of you. It will make no difference to us. Okay? Now what? Get rid of the bracket, so there's 180. 180 times x? 180x plus. So 180 times 30. 5,400. So that is 5,400. Minus 180x is equal to x squared plus 30x. What happens? That cancels. So I got 0 is equal to x squared plus 30x minus 5400. And then one of four ways I can do this, I can either use the factors, which is going to be fairly large, for that equation, completing the square, or we can use the calculator. Okay. So it's 1, 30, negative 51, 60, or negative 90. Kilometers per hour, or, or x is equal to negative 90 kilometers per hour. People can be negative. No, so I exclude that. But I have answered the question. The question says calculate the speed of the loaded train. So what's the speed of the loaded train? 60, which is the initial speed, not so. And the time between the two stations, 
when the train is loaded. So the, the, the time, they're looking at the loaded time, of course, is going to be time is equal to 90 over 60, which is one and a half hours. Okay. Any confusion there, people? No, and that was number 10. Why didn't you let me change the numbers here? Alright, so in tomorrow's uh, lesson, we're going to look at numbers 11 to uh, 15. I think there's 15 something, right? Eh?